Let's start with the Tory leadership race. It appears more than 600,000 people have signed up to vote in the race, smashing the old record. But candidates won't learn who they are just yet. Ian Brody is the chair of the Conservative Leadership Organizing Committee. He's in Calgary. Hi, Mr. Brody. Good to have you back on the program. Always a pleasure to be back. I appreciate it. Uh, your party this morning said that campaigns should prepare, leadership campaigns should prepare for a party membership list that is well over 600,000 eligible voters. Does that mean that all those memberships are uh, legitimate? Well, we won't, I, we won't have a final membership number for a couple of weeks. Uh, we have, we take sales uh, on the website and we took uh, a few thousand sales by uh, traditional uh, paper memberships. It's going to take the party staff and some volunteers a little bit of time uh, to come to a membership list. But we were trying to give, you know, campaigns at the beginning of this race, I think, told us they were planning for 350, then 400,000 uh, memberships. And we wanted to let people know they should be aiming for a bigger number. We'll have a solid number of confirmed memberships uh, in a couple of weeks. And is there uh, sort of like a verification process for them uh, that, that is ongoing or how does that exactly work? Yeah, so uh, because uh, we took most of these memberships on the party's website, uh, so they were paid for by a credit card, we we're able to match the, the credit card to the name of the person uh, in the membership. If the credit card went through, we know there's, we know there's somebody at the other end. We then have uh, improved, I think, our process for cleaning up the membership list. There are inevitably going to be duplicates because people sign up several times in the enthusiasm uh, of, a, of a leadership race. That's why we're a little bit uncertain about <clears throat> the total number of memberships we're going to have just yet. That takes a while. And then, of course, uh, people in the big media centers in, uh, in uh, Ottawa and Toronto uh, used to having a postal code that or a street address that can identify exactly which riding they live in for our leadership race because of the formula it matters where a, a member is counted and in the big rural parts of the country that is often a a, a manual process we'll have a um, hundred odd staff going through trying to make sure we know exactly where people live before we produce the final membership list so that that takes some time uh, two years ago <clears throat> during covid it took about eight weeks to produce uh, the, the final voters list after uh, the membership uh, deadline had passed. I think we'll be, we'll be well ahead of that this time because uh, some of the COVID restrictions have lifted and we've improved the, uh, the process of doing this. So we've just hired out an awful lot more staff. Do you have sort of a, uh, an assessment at this point? Obviously all that has to happen over the next few weeks, but do you think based on what you've seen so far and the fact that there is the credit card thing, there is the, the website that so many of these went through, that you are likely looking at memberships north of 600,000 or in and around there somewhere? Like, do you think the discrepancy will be so big as to vastly change that number or probably be in and around there? I don't think we know because uh, since at the very end, when lots of memberships were coming in, we had trouble confirming to people that we had received their membership. So naturally, uh, some people, uh, you know, tried to uh, avoid that risk by signing up two or three times. And so we don't, uh, don't think we quite know what the duplicate number looks like. But yes, I think we'll be in the, the 600,000 600, range. Okay, so you, you also said that you were uh, likely a few weeks away from coming up with a final list. Is it your intention, and I, I was looking through your release this morning, to release that final list to the campaigns the second it's done? Or will you take as much as time as all, all the way until uh, July 29th, <coughs> which I think the rules lay out, you, you, you know, is kind of your, your deadline? Well, there's a couple of stages here that are normal for a race of this kind. Uh, the rule rules of the, the party require that we have a preliminary voters list out to uh, campaigns uh, ahead of that uh, a final deadline so they can uh, uh, do their own uh, checks to make sure that all the people they signed up are there. You know, in some cases, uh, uh, Ian Public and Ian Public Jr. might be, uh, you know, we have trouble figuring out those are two different people. So we have uh, each campaign has a 72 hour period to take a look at the list and provide us with some changes then our returning officer has to produce the, the final list. But I expect we'll be ahead of the July 29th deadline for that, yes. So I've been told that, that you're, uh, you've communicated or someone has communicated that likely that preliminary list will first go out. So the first chance for campaigns to take a look at this will be July 4th. Is that accurate? 
Uh, I think that's our estimate at the moment, but again, uh, uh, subject to, uh, uh, we may move more quickly or more slowly in some of the new tools that we're bringing to bear on this. But yes, I think we'll be a month away from having from having that list out to campaign. So I'll explain to you and our viewers why I'm asking, because I know it seems kind of technical for people who are not you know, following every movement of right. each leadership race. But a number of the campaigns, uh, four I believe of them, have asked for a list of these members prior to any of those deadlines that you just laid out or any of those markers you just laid right. out. They want to be able to val validate them and they're worried that they won't have enough time to kind of uh, you know, make, the, uh, make the efforts to persuade some of those members uh, because right. ballots start being mailed out in July. What is your response to those concerns? Because we've heard from a number of those campaigns and they're pretty worried about those two things colliding. Yes, look, I mean, uh, in order to be fair to all of the campaigns uh, that are in this race, I have to follow the party's rules. And the party's rules uh, uh, set out, have since the beginning, that there'll be two these two uh, membership lists, the preliminary list that can be used for uh, challenging memberships or for making corrections, and then a final list a week or so a week or so later, with the idea that those will be out in July. Uh, the original timeline was, uh, uh, you know, uh, all of the campaigns have known this uh, since March. Uh, the preliminary list, if we're able to have it out for uh, beginning of July, gives those campaigns two months. Uh, to do uh, persuasion, to get a hold of the complete membership list before uh, mail is due back, ballots are due back uh, at the beginning of September in Ottawa. Uh, it's obviously not going to be possible for um, every candidate to phone every one of these, let's say, 600,000 members between now and then. But between telephone, mail, uh, email, and, and, and other techniques, I don't expect there's going to be any shortage of time. I think that there'll be a, a vigorous persuasion period here, and all of the campaigns will have plenty of time to do that. I guess their contention is, though, because ballots are mailed out, they can then be mailed back, right? So, so the, the window to persuade, though you say it's two months, to them appears much shorter. Is there any possibility? And, and I think I heard Patrick Brown on another program, for example, say in the past leadership races, there's been kind of a rolling release of, of some of the membership list. Is, is that a possibility at all? Or, or are you ruling it out and saying, no, uh, you know, it, we have to wait till this preliminary slash final thing is done in a couple weeks? Well, that's not been our practice of the federal conservative party for the last few uh, leadership races. And I say, everybody's known since March, the rules provide for two releases of, uh, of membership lists after the membership uh, deadline. That's the preliminary list uh, we're working on right now. And then after they've had a chance to make some corrections, there'll be a final list in, in plenty of time to hit all of the mailing deadlines and the contact. I, I don't think any of our 600,000 members will find that they've had a shortage of opportunities to hear from the candidates by the time they have to cast their ballot. On that note, one quick final question. Will there be a third leadership debate? No decision about that yet, uh, in part because uh, we wanted to see uh, what the effort was going to be to process uh, all of these memberships and to get the membership list out. And I have to admit, over the last two weeks, as I saw all of these memberships uh, coming in at the last minute, I was in Ottawa last week for the membership cutoff. Uh, I was focused on that rather than on debate. So that's uh, something to turn our minds to shortly. So you will make a decision one way or the other, though? That's right, yes. And just given the volume really quickly, I'm just thinking as you're describing how much work is involved in processing those memberships, I know that you said you expect you can still make that September 10th deadline. Have you ruled out completely any kind of extension? I don't see any scenario at the moment where we'd be looking for, uh, for an extension. As I say, last time with people on work from home and all the COVID restrictions, it took about eight weeks to produce uh, the voters list, uh, given that we have new tools available to us and the size of the membership list actually makes the new tools a little bit easier uh, to manage. I think, I think we'll be well ahead of that. This will we'll be well on schedule. Okay, thanks, Mr. Brody. Appreciate it. Good to talk to you. That's Ian Brody, the chair of the Leadership Organizing Committee for the Tory leadership race. Let's get reaction now from one of the leadership hopefuls. Patrick Brown is a conservative candidate, leadership candidate rather. He's in Brampton, Ontario. Hi, Mr. Brown. Good to see you again. Good to see you. I appreciate you making the time. I want to start off on uh, an issue I've heard you raise earlier this week around the membership list uh, from the party that, that was produced after the deadline uh, to, to buy those memberships passed last week. I just spoke to Ian Brody, who's heading up the committee for this leadership, and I asked him about some of the concerns you and other candidates have raised, namely that you want 
preliminary lists kind of released before the official one comes out in early July. And, and he contends that, that you and other candidates have known since March that this is the way it would unfold and that you still have a couple of months to persuade those voters before September 10th. Your response to that? Well, I think it should be a completely transparent process with the list. I, I would note, I believe Ian Brody is doing his uh, best. This is a tremendous volume of, of memberships and uh, you know, he's a capable, fair individual. I would say though in past leaderships, there was interim lists made available. This is, you know, we've got, we haven't had a membership list for uh, a long time. And I think it's only fair that we have the opportunity to present our ideas and have this democratic debate uh, with all members of the party. And I find it peculiar that you have every camp that wants an interim list to be released, but you have one camp uh, refusing. Um, and I don't know why they would refuse. Uh, um, what's wrong with having a debate of ideas with all memberships? Why would you try to shield um, those that you've signed up or have signed up through the party portal from hearing the perspectives of every, of every candidate? I know that you're, you're rivals, but if for a second you put yourself in the shoes of Pierre Polyev and you've signed up, as they've said, 311,000 members, wouldn't you kind of put up a little bit of a fight too if you're just expected to hand them over at the earliest possible point, especially if the rules don't dictate that you do? Well, so here's the problem, uh, Vashi, is that um, to mail them out across the country is going to take a long time. And so by the time we get the list, you know, you're know, you going to have uh, segments of uh, the voting um, membership that will have never had an opportunity to hear from other candidates. You know, I, I would say I think a lot of us still question that the the numbers that Pierre Pauli have, has has claimed. But um, regardless, regardless, uh, you know, if he's confident in the memberships that he's sold up, why would he not want them to hear other perspectives? Um, you know, if he's confident that that. But if he's worked that hard that, to get them all, why should he just hand them over? I guess is what they would be asking. I mean, that's that's the rule of the of the process. The, the, but the, the rule rules, dictates uh, that it can be done a little bit later. It doesn't have to be done right now at this juncture. But in past leaderships, they've always provided an interim list. It's unusual that that's not the case this time. And so I think it's it, it's clear you got five candidates that want to have a, um, a democratic uh, uh, debate. Uh, and by the way, imagine running for MP and, and not having a full voters list. Um, before voters were going to the advanced polls. Um, you know, it, it just, it's part of democracy to have the list uh, of those that you, you need to earn the, 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 the trust and, and, and support from. You have to have the ability to communicate to them. That's part of democracy. I heard you there uh, say that you have some questions about the numbers that the Polyev campaign has put forward. Uh, Jenny Byrne, a senior advisor to uh, the leadership campaign, to Pol Mr. Polyev's leadership campaign, said uh, earlier this week that you and other campaigns only want this interim membership list released because it would benefit you as you haven't sold anywhere near the memberships they have. She also called you a liar. Uh, your response? So if they were that confident in their campaign and they actually did sell the memberships that they claim to have, um, they wouldn't be as worried as they are. They're, they continue to take a scorched earth approach to other candidates. And that doesn't speak to the confidence of um, a, a presumed uh, front runner. And so you know, their actions um, tell a very different story. To be fair, though, they did release to the Globe and Mail a pretty detailed accounting of where all those memberships were signed off, uh, signed up rather, right across the country. Uh, and and Miss Byrne contends, look, if you actually sold 150,000 memberships, as you contend, that you would release the exact number. Will you? How, how many exact memberships have you sold? Yeah, we've sold over 150,000, uh, and I'm sure we could do a, um, uh, a, a little over, a lot over. Yeah, it, it was it was definitely over 150,000 by the Friday morning, and and I would say that we could certainly release a regional uh, uh, breakdown. But you know, I believe that was more just for PR purposes that uh, um, that uh, the Poly of Camp was doing a breakdown to try to um, build uh, support for the numbers they are releasing. But you know, to, to, for them to have sold the numbers that they claim to have, party membership would have had to be 750,000, and it, and it, and it isn't. So 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 clearly, there's a disconnect with it with the claim they've made and the size of the party membership. How do you know that that would have been uh, led to 750,000? Just just help me with the math, because the party says it's in and around 600,000. You've sold 150, you say. They say they've sold 311. There's room for the other candidates to have sold tens of thousands in there and still get to 600. Why do you say it's over 7? Well, well, you also have the existing membership. And the existing membership at the start of this, the first list we got was 164,000. So, you know, if 
Pierre Polyev's claims are true, then essentially no one else has sold the uh, um, memberships. And so, you know, I, Isn't that possible? it's one of the reasons, it, Other it's, than you? no, but no, I, I don't think that's possible because I think the other campaigns ran um, robust campaigns as well. I would say it's one of the reasons that it's only fair to have the, the 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 list out. If you have the list out, no one's hiding anything. We'll know exactly where everyone stands. You said that at some point you might release where the where your memberships are sold. Are are they only in one spot? Are they equally distributed or or to some degree distributed across the country? I think we had a, a great distribution across the country. We did very well in Vancouver, in Calgary, in Regina, in Winnipeg, in Montreal. You know, in, in Quebec, we sold over 10,000 memberships. We had membership drives in, uh, in, in Whitehorse and Yellowknife. Uh, um, we actually had a, a pretty good membership tally in none of it. So we uh, tried to uh, spread the membership drive out throughout the country. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm confident in our distribution as well. The nomination deadline for uh, mayor of Brampton is August 19th. Will you be putting in your papers for that or have you ruled that out? Listen, my only plan right now is to run for the federal conservative leadership and take our party into government into the into the next election. Does that mean that you will not run as mayor for Brampton in the next election there? Yeah, people have asked me if if I would um, ever um, consider uh, returning as mayor of Brampton if I wasn't um, successful. What I would say is, listen, I believe we're going to win this race. I believe we're going to be successful in this leadership. Um, having said that, if there was another candidate that won, if Jean Charest uh, won or or Leslie Lewis uh, was successful, could I run under them? Absolutely. I, I think they've got a they have the capacity to win the next general election with Pierre Polyev. Um, I just don't believe he could win seats in the GTA. I think his his message is is too divisive, and I, I don't believe even as a popular mayor in the GTA that I could win um, a seat with with a leader like Pierre Polyev. And so, for me, following the federal route um, with Pierre um, wouldn't make much sense. So I gather from that, if Pierre Polyev wins, you will run again to be mayor of Brampton. Uh, does that send the wrong message to voters? Does it look like you're maybe not so confident in your chances? No, what I'm saying is that if any other candidate was successful, I, I, I'm I'm committed to running federally. I just don't believe any candidate uh, could have success in the GTA if Pierre was leader. And it's one of the reasons that, that I'm running. I, I want the party to be able to break through in the GTA. We're not going to beat Justin Trudeau if we don't win in the GTA. You have to win in suburban Canada. And so my only plan is to run uh, for this federal conservative leadership and win the next election. I haven't even uh, thought about returning to municipal politics. Uh, if Pierre was successful, that's something that I suppose I would um, consider. Um, but that's certainly not something on my agenda right now. Don't you have to know, though, by August and you won't know who wins the leadership race, right? So are you putting in your papers in August, I guess? Yes or no? I have no plans to put my papers okay. in. OK, I'll leave it there. Mr. Brown, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.